Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Happy holidays everyone. This is the fifth day of Boa Mess. And so I'm doing a series of the 12 days of Boa Mess, showing you 12 different locality boas that I'm fortunate to have in my collection to be working with over the 12 days of Boa Mess. So day five brings a perennial favorite to the locality boa collector, and that of course is the Hog Island boa. This is one of the original locality boas which has been available to the hobbyist for the past few decades. Really before the whole locality craze started, we had these Hog Island boas, and they've been available in captivity since at least the 70s. So this is a beautiful, lightly colored, almost hypomelanistic boa that's from a chain of two small islands called the Hog Islands off of the coast of Honduras. And so these animals, you can see the light colors, they've got a lot of pink and orange to them. And they look completely different from the mainland Honduran boas that live just, you know, 50 miles or so uh, in mainland Honduras, away from the Hog Islands. And so these animals were collected in large numbers for the pet trade between the 70s and the 90s. There were thousands of them collected. And these are really small islands of just, you know, a few square miles of that. Uh, so it put a pretty large pressure on the, na the native population and the species or the uh, type of boa was on the verge of extinction. Fortunately, they were uh, protected and the uh, Honduran government banned all collection of these animals back in the 90s and they appear to have made a comeback and so they're safe and kept in the wild at this point. And the good thing is that there's a lot of them in captivity since so many were collected. So there's a really good captive population to work with. And uh, when it's one of the more commonly available types of locality boas. So if you want one for your collection, you should be able to find one. However, you need to make sure you have a pure one because unfortunately a lot of people have crossed these into morph projects. In fact, there's even a morph called the hypo hog where people take a hog island boa, they cross it with a hypo morph boa, and they get this kind of light colored, orangey looking boa. And then they'll even cross these together to get these sunset boas, which have your super hypo hog, which have even more bright orange colors. So once you do this, this is no longer a hog island boa. And unfortunately you can't get the hog island boa back once it's been crossed into another locality. And a lot of people just completely misrepresent or they're just ignorant of what they have and they call it a hog island boa. But I've seen so many boas lately on the online classifieds labeled as hog island, which clearly are not hog island boa. So be sure to ask the breeder or seller where they got the boa, you know, what, what bloodline it comes from and any history they can provide you uh, just to make sure that you're getting the real thing. So this is a baby. This is a, a female that was born here as a baby back in 2018. This is a pure Sears bloodline and Sears is one of the more common bloodlines. The parents of this animal were produced by Vin Russo and they're both Sears bloodline. And so you can see the Sears bloodline is one of the lighter bloodlines. You can see how light lightly colored this animal is. They've got a lot of beautiful colors. You know, most obvious are the pinks and oranges, but then there's a more subtle green and bluish tint that they often have. Uh, they change colors quite a bit. They'll get darker and lighter, depending on the time of day and the temperature and their mood. Although the Sears bloodline is, is I've, in my experience, it tends to be one of the lighter bloodlines. Um, you can see this animal has a lot of speckling. And I really like the speckling. The speckling is present in the animals in the wild. A lot of people have selectively bred hog island boas in captivity uh, to remove the speckling. Um, but you know, I'd rather have the, the, the wild type look that has the speckling. And you can see the saddles in this form of boa are less distinctive. And then looking at the tail, the tail is kind of this uh, orangey brick red color. I can, if you can see her tail, but just a gorgeous, beautiful animal. Uh, so again, a must for any locality boa collection, one of the original locality boas. Hope to have some babies in 2022 to offer, but just, you know, can't, you can't go wrong with these hog island boas. This is another hog island boa born at my facility. This is a 2019 baby. So a year younger than the female I just showed you. And this one is actually a half sibling to the one I showed you. 
Uh, the father is the same, a Sears bloodline from Vin Russo. The mother of this animal is an unknown bloodline that I got from Ron Greenberg. And the female that produced this one is a little bit darker in color with more speckling. And I really like how these babies came out. I actually prefer these to the pure Sears bloodline. You can see they're a little bit darker in color, although actually this animal is kind of in her light phase right now. But the contrast of the colors is just really gorgeous on these animals. They just have more of this kind of the subtle green shade, but a lot of pink and orange and a little bit of blue in there. Just a really gorgeous animal, like a rainbow of colors. I don't know how well it comes out on the, on the camera. Also a lot of the speckling. And I love on these Hog Island boas how the, the saddles are kind of less distinct. And you just get this beautiful effect of the, the colors kind of merged together. But just, you know, beautiful animal to look, to look at. You know, certainly as beautiful as a true red tail, in my opinion. Hog Island boas tend to be pretty docile. You know, they're easy to handle. They're kind of a medium-sized boa with, you know, some adults are maxing out at around four feet. Some get to like six feet. I've even seen some females that are like seven feet. Uh, so they can get a little bit bigger, but they don't get huge. And in general, the husbandry is pretty straightforward. What I will say is that I found the babies can be a little tricky to get feeding. You know, when I bred babies, sometimes they don't take uh, rodents right off the bat and they have to be force fed for a while, which I would prefer not to do. But other than that, they don't really present any challenges in husbandry. And of course, you should make sure that your baby bow is feeding uh, before you buy the animal. So that's the Hog Island Boa, great locality boa for Boa Mess Day number five, and uh, must have for the locality collector. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Hog Island Boa. Please stay tuned for further videos in this series exploring the 12 days of Boa Mess. Thanks for watching and Merry Boa Mess.